Hey everyone, uh, my name is Cody. I'm a solo developer at Chum Studios. Uh, I'm gonna link my info in the description so you can check out some games I've made in the past. Uh, but yeah, today I'm gonna be looking into a, a small Godot demo over a shader that I created. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right in. All right, so as you can see here, I have a simple uh, Godot setup with a ball as my character and just like a shape in the middle with some collision and I'm able to move around. Um, the only thing that's been done to this project uh, is I've just like um, scaled down the resolution so as you can see it's a little pixelated which works really well with um, the shader that I'm about to show. Um, so I'm going to turn the shader on and as you can see um, it's a dot dither shader and uh, I made this shader to work with colors so you're able to still see the color of the cylinder and the player and everything else and also um, you're able to customize kind of like whatever dark color you want and the light color as well so as you can see the lightest colors here are kind of the same and the darkest color as in this background here is also the same as well so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and create a new project so the first thing you want to do in the uh, new project is create a new 3D scene and we want to call this whatever you want. You can just say level one. And then inside of this, you want to create a sub viewport container. You can keep that name the same way it is. And inside of this uh, sub viewport container, uh, you want to add stretch and stretch strength to two that we need a sub viewport as a child. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna have a sub viewport. Uh, and this is gonna allow us to kind of control what we're seeing uh, <clears throat> through a shader, kind of like through some post-processing. So we wanna create a 3D mesh, or 3D node, sorry. So we wanna create a node 3D here. And this will actually be our where our meshes and everything in our level go. So we have this level here. And inside of here, we want to create a world environment. And then in environment, we want to create a new environment. Um, within the level, we want to create a uh, mesh 3D instance. And this is going to be our floor. So within our uh, floor, we want to create a static body 3D. Um, and then here we want to create a collision shape within it. And this collision shape is going to be a box. So within our floor, we want to put a mesh in here as well. So we'll make this into a box as well. Um, and then one more thing we can do is kind of like scale this to make, just make it look like a floor. So we can just go like 6.5. And then let's unlock those and this will can this can be like 0 0.05 or something tiny and then also one thing I want to do is um, in our preview of the other project we had it in a orthograph or orthogonal view um, so it kind of helps to have that uh, in your editor as well so I just go here and I click orthogonal orthogonal whatever it is <laughs> next we want to create another node 3d and this is going to hold our light. And uh, I have some settings that I kind of like for this setup. Um, we can keep all of these the same, but we need to change. Actually, you know what? It needs to go within the, uh, the parent object. So here we can do negative 75, negative 45, and 180. We want to actually move this out a little bit. So next we have, uh, we want to create the camera. So we're going to create a, um, a camera 3D. So within this camera 3D, just like earlier, uh, I mentioned that this is going to be orthogonal. So we're going to add that here. Um, we're going to add this current toggle and we're going to change the size to kind of match what we want. And then here in our transform, we're going to want to move our camera out. Um, so we're able to actually see what's going on. 
So we do 7.5, 3.5, and 5.5. These are just settings that I kind of uh, have saved and they work. So, And then we want to rotate it uh, 21 degrees negative on the X axis and 54 degrees on the Y and keep this last one zero. Now that if we hit play, we should be able to see Okay, so it's really tiny here, so this is going to take a, a little bit of fixing. But first, we're going to add a mesh instance 3D. And so this is, we're going to rename this to post-processing. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually fix this viewport here. Um, so we want to go to layout uh, and go to full rect here because it was making it really tiny and this will actually stretch out our scene and then so now if we hit play we should be able to see the full thing so yeah we want to come down here to texture and do this as uh, nearest and this should actually clean up those lines as you can see okay now that we have our view kind of set up let's just add a quick character uh, so here we add a character body 3d next we're gonna have to add a collision shape 3d and this is going to be a sphere and within the character as well we need a mesh so mesh instance 3d and we'll make this a sphere as well here we need to move the entire character body or it's going to fall through the floor cool i have a custom script that we can use here so let's see let's go into our script so first we need to add some parameters here. Um, this will be just speed, gravity, and jump speed. And um, these will just kind of control uh, how you want your character to move. You can do these, uh, since these are exported, you're able to actually um, adjust these in the sidebar as needed. Um, so next we're gonna wanna create a um, physics process function. And this is how you do that. And within then there, we need to create this uh, variable input vector and then within there we're able to actually create our um, our movement so we create these four uh, if statements so basically these will check if the user is using the UI up button which is the up, up arrow or the W button um, to get this to actually work for WASD, you'll need to come here to project, project settings, uh, input map. You're going to want to create a new action called W. And let's see, we'll just want to do, just press the W and press enter. Wait, press W and press OK. And then you're going to want to do this for the rest. Okay, now that that's done, we're able to close out of this. And so now we're able to use the up arrow or the down arrow or WASD for all of these movements and these will um, work as intended. So now that that's done, we're able to actually, um, we need to do one more thing. Uh, it's kind of like finicky um, for games that are uh, orthogonal. I don't even know how to say that word, Orth orthogonal. Uh, we need to normalize the vector um, next, we're going to have to set the velocity of our player and then we're going to have to do some logic um, for jumping as well. And here all you need to do is just add another if statement and let's see. So all you need to uh, basically it's going to check for uh, basically the space button um, for you to jump. And then uh, we're gonna have another if statement here that's gonna check do a gravity check um, So it's gonna check if we're on the floor and then if we uh, are not on the floor, it's gonna apply gravity uh, If not, then you can do other things here depending on what you want And then here we're just gonna want to call move and slide Which is a built-in function in Godot So now let's uh, do control s to save come here to character body and add our script So now we're able to actually move our character. I'm pressing WASD. As you can see, it'll go up, left, down, and right. And now if I do the uh, arrow keys, it'll do the same thing. And since this is orthogonal, you'll see that it doesn't go straight up. It kind of goes in its own like obscured way, um, which I think kind of brings some character to the game. Um, but I, uh, yeah, just be aware of that. 
and this will actually like it'll apply gravity if I fall off of this right here uh, so that's pretty cool so here in our post-processing um, mesh instance we'll have to do a couple things here we're gonna have to go to our mesh instance 3d and we'll have to make a new quad mesh within this quad mesh we're gonna have to edit it And then we'll have to go to material and do a new shader material and then we'll have to edit that and then create a new shader and we'll just call this dot to be simple all right so within our um, dot dither shader we're gonna have to do a few things go ahead and remove everything here and then add a unshaded render mode and then we're going to have to um, define these three variables here um, the screen texture depth texture and normal texture and by the way I'm gonna supply all of the code here uh, in the description so if you guys get lost or whatever you can check it there as well uh, and then we're gonna have to add a bunch of other uh, variables here these are what will enable you to create your own kind of variation of this uh, shader. So you play around with these values and you'll get a different thing that one you're seeing in this video. Um, and let's see, let's just go ahead and add the rest of the variables here. And let's see, here in these colors, um, these are what I explained, like the light and the dark colors. colors. Um, so for color A, this will be your dark color. And you have to kind of um, adjust this to show what background color you want and I'll kind of show you right here real fast. So in my uh, completed example as you can see this dark color you can make it black or you can make it like this kind of like maroon color that I have and for light I have this kind of tan color so that's what these colors are. We will create a function called vertex here and then our main function what we're going to want to do is create a function called void fragment. And within here, we're gonna wanna create a color in node that takes in a texture with our screen texture defined before and the screen UV of our screen. And it'll actually grab the RGB of that screen. And we're gonna play around with that uh, manually. And so under there, we're gonna wanna have to create our brightness and we're gonna take our color in and our vector. And I have some defined variables here that I played around with that actually, um, that worked for me. Uh, as I said before, you can go ahead and edit these as needed. So next, uh, we're going to want to create a if statement here that'll check if the brightness is less than the minimum brightness that we defined. We're going to want to set the albedo to the dark color, which is color A. And then if not, we basically do everything else. So we'll grab the create a new. Um, variable called pixel coordinate and we will assign that as the screen UV times the viewport size so we're able to actually dynamically um, size our shader and we will divide that by our dither repeat which is defined earlier and you can also um, change that as well up here I have it as 1.0 and you can uh, change this to do whatever you want to make your shader yours Next, we define our threshold. And then, okay, so next was like, I don't really like how I coded this, but it works, I guess. So if we have a Bayer mode that's four, which is what I actually use, then I will um, basically um, define my four by four matrix. So it'll be 16 values, which uh, 
it is really annoying to create, um, but let's just go ahead and do it. <laughs> so we have int floor mod pixel. Oops. We have our pixel chord. We grab the x of that pixel coordination uh, coordinate, and we divide or we times it by. We bring in the uh, actual bear mode uh, input, and we do the same for the. Uh, y coordinate times y, and we do the same thing here. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Like I can have a variable that defines the bear mode, and then like input that here. Um, but it's kind of hard to do because the next thing we need to actually define um, that matrix, which is like this. Um, don't try to. I'm not gonna try to explain. Uh, why this is the way it is but that's just kind of how it needs to be um, and for the hell of it let's just go ahead and add um, an example for uh, an 8 by 8 ma matrix and this actually grows exponentially so this is gonna be a lot bigger than our um, our other one so yeah as you can see if we did 16 by 16 that you could see how big that could get um, and so at the end of that we're just gonna want to go ahead and add our color and let's clean up this fast uh, so yeah this is gonna choose between the two colors based on the brightness of the uh, screen or of, I guess that position of the screen um, so let's go ahead and save that we just need to um, come in here and do flip faces um, and this will actually apply the shader um, because it was showing the other direction but now we're able to see it here uh, as you can see the shader is working but it's not covering the full screen so we need to change the size. And so we're able to actually see our new shader, uh, which is really cool. So you're actually able to uh, customize a little bit um, of the shader. You can add color, you can change the color, the background, whatever you want. You can change the color of the light parts as well, uh, which is really cool. And as I said, you can add, you can change the Bayer mode. So if I change this back to four, uh, it looks like that. And if you go down, um, it won't really handle it because we don't have it defined. Um, but if we go to eight, you can see that there's more actual dots here. Um, and so it might actually, it's kind of weird, like depending on your resolution, uh, you'll see different things. That's one thing about the shader that's really weird. Um, so be aware of that. So yeah, you can do a bunch of cool stuff. You can change the repeat. Uh, I figured out that these dots are better for like uh, even numbers. So before we had it on one, two, like anything higher just gets kind of weird. Like here's like, this is pretty high to me, um, but it'll make your dots super huge. Um, I think underneath one is where things get kind of cool because you can it kind of shows like these weird little patterns um, So yeah, it's a bunch of stuff you can do go into the link in the description you can see all the code um, and also any games that I have created as well and um, Yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one